What's up, guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today, we're going to be doing the match preview for Real Betis versus Barcelona in La Liga. Barcelona are back in La Liga action after their historic win in the Cup against Granada, and they travel to the Bandito Villa Marine Stadium, which is usually a very, very difficult stage for Barcelona. But nonetheless, it's going to be a very, very difficult game against a very strong opponent. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button. Let's try to get the 200 likes on this video. It'd be very much appreciated. And of course, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table. Barcelona sat in second place in La Liga, playing 20 games, having won 12, drawn four, and lost four on 40 points. And I think for the first time this season, I am happy to say that our last five games, we have won all five. Barcelona are on a good run in La Liga at the moment, and they're trying their best to catch up to Atletico Madrid, but we have surpassed Real Madrid on goal difference for now. Of course, head-to-head -head will come into factor at the end of the season. Looks like Real Madrid are on a bit of a downturn at the moment, so Barcelona have surged into second place after the last round. And Barcelona now are eyeing the top spot of Atletico Madrid, and they're still... Realistically, with one game less played, 13 points behind. So with Barcelona's good form, Athletic Madrid have not dropped any points as well. Their hard run is going to be coming up very, very soon. I believe they face uh, Real Madrid, Athletic Bilbao, Villarreal, Sevilla, all in the space of you know a few games. So that's going to be the time where Barcelona catch up to Athletic Madrid. Now, if you take a look at our opponents, Real Betis, they are all the way down in seventh place, fighting for those Europa League spots. They have played 21 games this season. They have won nine, drawn three, and lost nine. So they have lost a lot of games this season. Sat on 30 points in total in their last five games. They've won three and drawn two. But nonetheless, we are coming up against the top 10 team in the Liga, so Barcelona gonna have to come into this game on top form, which we are. They're gonna have to put in an absolutely fantastic performance in order to take all those three points. Let's get in now and talk about Real Betis. Now, there is a weird connection between Barcelona and Real Betis because we do have a lot of similar players in common and we've given them a lot of our players as well. For example, in their current squad, they have six former and current Barcelona players. Marta Montoya, La Masia won the treble in 14-15. Same with Mark Bartra, he won the treble with us in 14-15. Christian Teo, very, very good player from La Masia. He have currently on loan Emerson, who is owned by Barcelona. Juan Miranda, who is from La Masia, who is currently on loan at Real Betis. And of course, you have our former goalkeeper, Claudio Brava, who was, you know, the understudy for Ter Stegen. And of course, Barcelona currently have two former Real Betis players. We have Junior Firpo, and of course, Casalina had a little bit of a low spell there as well. And also, our former Barcelona coach, Kiesa Tien, was also the coach of Real Betis, where he made his name and he's of course the former coach of FC Barcelona. So of course there's no denying the fact that there is a connection between Real Betis and Barcelona and, and those former Barcelona players that are currently playing at Real Betis want to come into this match and they want to prove a point. Let's take a look at Real Betis' last five games. Of course their last game was in the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey where they did lose on penalties which is quite unfortunate. The last league game they did beat Osasuna 1-0. They beat Real Sociedad in the Cup 3-1 into extra time. They drew with Real Sociedad in the League 2-2 and then they beat Celta Vigo in the League 2-1. Now, of course, the last time Barcelona played Real Betis this season was at the Camp Nou, where Barcelona won on the night 5-2. The Belly scoring with a beautiful goal. Sanabria scoring before halftime. He's also, by the way, a former Barcelona player as well. Then Messi came in at halftime for Asu Fati, who, of course, Fati who did get injured in this match, which is, you know, what, the reason why he's injured. Griezmann scoring, Messi scoring, Pedri scoring, and, of course, Lorenzo Morón got a consolation goal. Now, there's a few games I want to take a look at for Real Betis. We're going to take a look at their Cup of the Week quarterfinal loss at Athletic Bilbao, their win against Osuna, and their two games against Real Sociedad. Let's take a look at their league game against Real Sociedad, where they drew 2-2 on the night with Alexander Isaac and Oriente Ball scoring for them, and Sergio Canales and Joaquim scoring for them to get the draw. They scored two goals in six minutes to earn that draw. You can see the sidelines on the screen. Of course, Real Betis predominantly play in a 4-2-3-1 system, but in this match, they decided to go with the 4-4-1-1 system. Again, they have very, very strong players. Emerson at right back, Isa Mandy, Victor Ruiz, Juan Miranda, Barcelona player. They have Guardado, very, very good player. Sergio Canales, from Real Madrid player as well. Nadal Fakir, quality, quality player. And of course, up top, they have Loren Moron. Now, of course, Real Betis were away in this match, and they did go 2-0 down, and they fought back to bring it back 2-2. The system didn't really work in the beginning. Pellegrini switched back to the 4-2-3-1 system, and they came back and got a draw. Straight after that match, they faced Real Sociedad in the Copa del Rey, and this match went into extra time with Oriasaba scoring the 13th minute and Sergio Canales scoring in the 80th minute, and then Borja Iglesias stepped up in extra time and scored a brace. You can see their sideline on the screen. Of course, again, very, very similar players. Of course, there is some rotation because it is a Copa del Rey. Let's take a look now at their last league game. They did beat Osasuna 1-0 at home with, again, Borja Iglesias saving them after getting subbed on for Laurent Moron. He's currently on good form after scoring three goals in his last two games. And the lineup in this game is something we can definitely look forward to in our matchups. So probably something similar to this. Of course, Robles in goal. Emerson at right back. Isa Mandy, Victor Ruiz, and Alex Moreno. Sergio Canales in midfield with Joaquim on the right of him. And Rodriguez Sanchez on the left of him with Nabil Fakir in the middle and Laurent Moron up top. Now, in this match, Real Betis were absolutely dominant. Of course, Osasuna came and they just pretty much parked the bus and were trying to take the draw or just nick a winner. In the end, Borja Iglesias was through on goal and he did a great finish. I think it was a chip goal and that got him three points. Now, let's take a look at their last game, which was in the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey, where they got knocked out on penalties against Athletic Club. Now, this match was played the day after Barcelona, so theoretically, Barcelona are coming into this match on 24 hours extra rest. 
and Real Betis went into extra time as well. So Barcelona and Real Betis playing the exact same minutes in the space of 24 hours. Because if this game finished in the 90th minute, which it wasn't supposed to, by the way, because Raul Garcia scoring a 90th minute winner in the dying moments, Barcelona came to this match playing an extra half an hour of game. In this match, it was a very, very even game. Of course, Borja Iglesias wasn't playing that well. So instead of bringing on Lauren Moron, he brought on Juanmi. And Juanmi scored a fantastic volley. Of course, Juanmi, he had a good record against Barcelona, especially when he was at Real Sociedad. He scored a great goal, and they conceded in the dying moments of the game from Moro Garcia header. In extra time, Rebetis couldn't really get into the game because they subbed on a bunch of defenders, you know, lock up the 90 minutes, and they couldn't in the end. In penalty shootout, they lost 4 1. So, overall, Rebetis, of course, they are a very, very top side in La Liga, and they're one of the best teams in La Liga. They have a very, very good coach in Manuel Pellegrini, who, of course, won the Premier League with Manchester City, so he does have a pedigree in that sense. And, of course, their squad is very, very good, and they have top, top players. So, my message to Barcelona would be stay focused in the smash because if you make a defensive mistake, Real Betis will definitely capitalize. Let's get it now to the squad list. The squad list has been released and confirmed, and there are no surprises, and it is as follows. It is Ter Stegen, Des Araujo, Busquets, Griezmann, Pierre Braithwaite, Messi, Dembele, Ricky Pochnetto, Langlet, Pedri, Trincao, Jordi Alba, Fernandez, De Jong, Obtiti, Junior, Mingueza, and R9 Tejas. So again, no surprises in the squad list. No one's been injured. No one has been included. So those will be the players that will be traveling to Real Betis to play this match. Let's get it now to Ronald Coleman's press conference reaction. Of course, he did his press conference this morning, and he's asked a lot of questions by the media, and he gave us a lot of insight on you know players injuries give a lot of praise to the players and of course gave us an update on the team how they're feeling let's get it now and see what he had to say the first question came in asking about how the team is it's been very difficult because we have many games four of them having an extra time many away from home traveling arriving late so the team is in a very difficult state at the moment the team is well recovered to face difficult games like the more but i still haven't decided who will play we will see. It is not up to me to talk about Ansel Fati's recovery. He has to be respected. He has to recover calmly. So of course we talked about the injury of Ansel Fati yesterday, but now we have some more updates coming out saying that look, maybe he doesn't need surgery. Some people are saying that he's gonna be out for the rest of the season. All this sort of stuff are coming in, but mainly from Lawrence, he's coming out saying that Ansel Fati is extremely angry with the lack regarding the evolution of his knee injury. It is not clear whether or not he'll have another surgery, but the anger is monumental. Then Cohen was asked about the semifinal against Sevilla midweek, saying, look, will you be looking more to that game, or is this game more important? Which one's more important? He says, never good for a coach to say that one game is more important than the other. The next game will always be very important. You have to go game by game. We know that a very strong opponent awaits us in the semifinal of the Copa del Rey. Then he's asked about PK's interview, saying he, of course, talked about the referees. What are your thoughts on that? He said, PK's words about the referee. It is a statement from him, and it's his responsibility that he felt that way. I wasn't here before. I can't comment. I could only comment on things that happened since I arrived here. And it's true, we've had no fortunate with the referees. Again, Como was asked about Messi's future, saying that Messi's the one who decides his future. To me, as a coach, of course, I would like him to stay here for many more years. He gives us a lot. He has a lot of energy to help the team. Then he's asked about the game versus Granada, saying, how do you feel now after the game? He said, I can't deny the other day that after the game, I was very happy and proud of the team's attitude. They have showed a lot of quality, but football is very unique. Today, the sun rises and the tomorrow, it may rain. You have to be prepared for everything and go game by game. Then he's asked that, look, you have a double header at the end of the month against Sevilla. Will you stay in Sevilla to, you know, minimize the traveling? Because, of course, you've been complaining a lot about the traveling, which he does again in the next few minutes. He said the same to be because we have to play two games to get there in a short time. It is true that the schedule will allow us to do things like that, but I'm in favor of sleeping at home instead of spending three days there. The players are used to this now, and I also prefer to be at my home. Then he's asked about his reaction to Sergio Roberto's injuries. He said the Sergio Roberto's injuries are a big blow for everyone, starting with him. I asked him at halftime, can you go hold on? He said, yes, I'm fine. Then after eight minutes, he got injured. We have to give him courage and let him recover. And of course, he's 100% ruled out for the first leg against PSG. Then he's asked about Longlet, saying, look, Longlet hasn't been playing a lot in the team recently. What's up with him? Is he injured? Did he fall out of favor? He said that Longlet is important to us. We have competition because Umtiti is fine. And after his injury, it's not because one is better than the other. Sometimes one does the job well, and then it's time for the other player to wait. Then he's asked about the impact of Dembele on the squad. He said Dembele physically has improved a lot and I have no doubt about his quality as a player. I don't know how he was in the past. He's great at 1v1 in depth and speed and of course playing two-footed. I love these type of players and I'm very happy for him. Then he's asked about Antoine Griezmann saying, look, he improved a lot in the squad. How's he doing now? He's a Griezmann. I remember the call I made at the beginning of the season when I signed for Barcelona. I told him I had a lot of confidence in him and I told him by the phone that he should feel important. It is true at first that he wasn't really that effective, but now I have no doubts about him. Griezmann is a player who does a lot of self-criticism and works a lot. You can't ask for more from a player who's so committed to the team. Then he's asked about Ronald Araujo saying, can we see Araujo get some rest this weekend? He said that Araujo is feeling like the other players will also play several games in a row now. If it would be a risk to play him, we won't play him, of course, but the final decision is mine. Then he's asked about the situation of Ter Stegen starting in the cup ahead of Neto. He said that we decided to play Ter Stegen in Granada, but on Wednesday, it may be different. We have to look at the best team to go through. It depends on a lot of things, the state of form, the attitude, etc. 
Then Coleman goes on a big rant about how they played 12 games over the past month, saying that we played 12 games at the beginning of the year and 11 have been away from home. We have to help the players at home FIFA and new UEFA think about the players and reduce the number of games. The schedule kills the players. So Coleman had this like one minute rant at the end of his press conference saying, look, the players are gonna, you know, they're dying here. They're playing, you know, every other day. Expect more injuries to come. And like, look, we can't perform at the level that we want to every single week. It's just too hard on the players, especially coming up against opponents who have, you know, a week's rest. It's just too difficult. And that concluded Ronald Coleman's press conference. Let's get in now to the lineup predictions. We're going to start off with Ronald Coleman. I'm going to try my best to predict this lineup. And it is going to be a difficult lineup to predict. Will he go strong? Will he make a little bit of rotation after playing 120 minutes against Granada? We'll have to wait and see. I've gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone with Ter Stegen and Goal, Mingueta, Araujo, Langlet, Jordi Alba, Busas, Leon Pedri, Dembele, Messi, and Antoine Griezmann. Starting off in the defense, I think he's going to make two changes. I don't see him playing Dest in back-to-back -back games after you know him having a bunch of muscle discomfort. And of course, Mangueta did not feature in the game against Granada, so he's fully rested and ready to go. And I said I'm back alongside Araujo. I do not think he can play Umtiti after you know making two mistakes against Granada nearly costing us the game. I think Langa is going to come straight back in. And of course, Jordi Alba with Dajan and Vidal will be starting at left back. Now, the big question for me for Coleman is in the midfield, will he make rotations? Because I think the front line and the defense is going to stay exactly the same only place where I can see him making rotations is in that midfield. Sport are coming out saying that, look, he's going to start Ricky Puch and Pjanic alongside De Jong. That's what they're saying at the moment. I just don't see that happening. I think he's going to go with the midfield three that's, you know, been trusted over the past month or so. Busquets, De Jong, and Pedri. Maybe the only thing I can see him do is bring in Ricky Puch, but I highly doubt that because, of course, he doesn't really like Ricky Puch. So I think he's going to go with that midfield. Of course, Pjanic or Ricky Puch could start this game, but I think it'll only be one of them. I don't see Coleman making two changes in that midfield. Now to the front three now. I don't see Coleman making any changes whatsoever. Drink cow, maybe. Don't see that happening. Brace for sure not going to happen. So I do think that front three is pretty much set in stone. Of course, the on the right-hand side is going to be so, so important. Griezmann can he back that performance against Granada. I've been putting in a master class. Messi's going to be messy. We all know that. So I don't see him making any changes to that front three. So that was my lineup prediction for Ronald Coleman. Let me know down below what you think he's going to pick. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach. And that lineup's on the screen right now. I've got with Ter Stegen in goal. That's Araujo Mingueta, Jordi Alba. Busquets, Young, Pedri, Messi, Griezmann, and Ousmane Dembele. Starting off in the defense, I would keep Des in the starting lineup. I think, you know, he needs to start getting more minutes. He's been out for a while with this muscle discomfort. And also, Real Batis have very, very pacey wingers, and I want Des to match them for pace. In the defense, I would love for Ronald Coleman to do this. I would go with the Barcelona B boys, Araujo and Mangueta, because, of course, they played a lot with each other at Barcelona B. For me, Umtiti making two mistakes. You cannot start him after making two mistakes. And Langlet hasn't been convincing recently. I think you have to move Mingueta from right back back into center back. Of course, unlikely to happen. I think Coleman wants to keep Mingueta at right back with their injury of Sergio Roberto. So we'll see. But for me personally, I would go with Mingueta. Of course, Jordi Alba left back pretty much set in stone. In the midfield, I've kept it the same. And I've stuck with Busquets, De Jong, and Pedri. Now, of course, you could be making an argument for Ricky Puch. But for me, i have be looking more at that Copa del Rey game against Sevilla or Ricky Puch. In this match, I want to keep you know, the connection strong between them three. In the front line, I've kept it the same with Messi, Dembele, and Griezmann. Don't see Trent Cow coming into this or Braithwaite. So for me, without a doubt, this front three is going to be starting this match. This is the lineup I've gone with, you know, very, very strong on the night. Maybe a little bit of rotation, maybe in defense. But I think this team could easily, easily be real Batiste. Let me know down below what you pick my lineup or Coma's lineup. Score prediction time. Time to predict the score for this match. I do think it's going to be a very, very difficult game on the night. Of course, Benedito Villamarín is a very, very difficult stadium to go to. But for me, the most important thing in this match is the starting lineup of Ronald Coleman and Pellegrini. Will Pellegrini make a few rotations? Will Coleman make a few rotations? Because as we all know, both teams just played 120 minutes in the Copa del Rey. Overall, I do think Barcelona will get the win on the night. I'm going to let Barcelona win this game by three goals to one. I do think we'll concede. Of course, the defense has been a little bit dodgy over the past few games. But I think our front line in the midfield will carry us to victory and get us those three points. So I'm going to go with Barcelona win this game by three goals to one. Let me know your score predictions down in the comments below. So that's my match preview for Real Betis versus Barcelona. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know your starting lines. And of course, we have to pick my lineup or Coma's lineup. And make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the round on the screen. Come and join me watching the game with me. Follow straight away after the match about my match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care and Forza Barca.